Okay, hello. <coughs> this is Dr. Janes, and this is my secret underground lab here. And uh, this is my uh, uh, tritium nuclear experiment. Now, let's face it. We all know that the future of energy is nuclear power. We should have had it in the 1950s, but uh, since everyone's been uh, brainwashed to be scared of uh, the very thing that will save them, we still don't have, we're still living on fossil fuels. Nuclear power is the only power that can uh, save us. It's the only power that can uh, replace fossil fuels, which I don't believe fossil fuels are actually fossil fuels, and I'll talk about that before. I, I think fossil fuels are actually a form of nuclear power as well, or generated by nuclear power, actually, from the Earth. <coughs> but today I'm going to talk about the... Uh, this is the third installment of the uh, tritium... Uh, fusion experiment. Fusion energy is a great form of energy if we can ever get it to work. But but let's not discount fission because fission is great as well. But today we're going to talk about this is our our tritium tube that you know let's get this junk out of here. And uh I finally found my uh fast neutron detector and I do have a uh, video footage someplace of me building this so if people are interested it's uh, basically some PVC pipes, and uh, inside of this nose cone up here, there is a uh, plastic scintillator. And the way it works, and, and then behind it is a, a photomultiplier tube. And we have our high voltage supply up there. And uh, this is a homemade thing, so I uh, put a bunch of uh, taps on the output, so I have a ground here. And the high voltage is actually negative. I don't know if you can see it behind this guy, but. So negative high voltage out, positive the ground. Then I have uh, two outputs here of the photomultiplier tube. The photomultiplier tube has a bunch of dynodes, and they kind of it has a photosensitive plate at the front. So this basically what happens is that there's a scintillator, and it's called a proton recoil. So if we generate neutrons here, a yeah, neutron will hit the scintillator. It'll have a a recoil, it'll hit one of the protons inside of the plastic and that proton will accelerate and produce a bunch of light and that light will go into the photomultiplier tube and the photomultiplier tube has a bunch of things called dynodes where they accelerate the electrons and then there's secondary emission and it kind of rattles around and amplifies it <coughs> millions of times and then it produces a signal at the output which we are going to run into our scope over here Okay, and here's our high voltage supply, of course, hooked up to our our uh, tritium device. And uh, let's let's just take a look at this. We'll set up this so we can watch the scope, and uh, we'll turn up the high voltage power and see what goes on. Actually, before we turn it on, I just wanted to talk about a couple things. Uh, Okay, so uh, I just wanted to talk about one more thing before I go in, on to this. Now, I know I've, I've worked with some people uh, in the Fuser community, and uh, they claimed uh, this guy in uh, West Virginia who was selling his Fuser, and actually I bought his neutron detector. It's a different one. I couldn't find it in my storage, though. And uh, he was claiming that the Fusion, fusion happens in a, better at a lower pressure and higher voltage and that makes sense because you get less collisions, you get more uh, uh, more uh, atoms at the fusion energy colliding and so uh, that, that was part of the reason why I did the uh, last video about the Debye length and I tried to measure what I thought the Debye length would be by two different means by uh, measuring the number density or estimating the number density based on the, the the Curie count that they gave us in the tube and then trying to measure it by uh, the plasma length by just putting voltage on it and they seem to be a little bit different and I come to the conclusion that um, the hydrogen is a very small molecule and it, it's at room temperature it's traveling much faster than the other molecules and it's actually able to penetrate containers and it diffuses out of them so I'm thinking that the for the older tubes at least, for older tritium tubes, this is their tritium tube here, that the uh, hydrogen is actually slowly diffusing out of it and so it's creating a higher vacuum because the, the air molecules, the nitrogen and the oxygen, are very much less likely to diffuse into it. They're a much bigger molecule and they're going much slower. 
And so hydrogen will tend to diffuse out of containers faster than uh, anything will diffuse into it. So this could be working in our favor, producing a vacuum inside the tube, which uh, I was a little bit surprised, by the way, because uh, I didn't think that I would be able to ignite a plasma in one of these tubes, but I guess guess I was. And so let's let's try turning her up and uh, uh, if you can hear the sound you can see it flashing oh. okay well, let's see what the scope is doing okay so there's our high voltage supply tritium fusion experiment <clears throat> okay here's our regal scope and uh, this is a nice scope I actually was 50 megahertz bandwidth and I did a software upgrade to make it 100 megahertz uh, that was before I started doing YouTube so that would have been a great video Maybe if I get another scope I'll show you guys how to do that uh, great people at regal don't want you to know how to do that one. <clears throat> They've uh, actually made all their scopes uh, 100 megahertz, and they disable that with a di software-controlled diode inside the scope. So, anyway, here's our scope, and let's start turning up the voltage. <clears throat> okay, well, and look at that. We're getting some kind of pulses here. exactly as we're pulse modulating it and uh, it's actually a whole series of pulses so it, it is detecting something now I'm a little bit concerned here about because these these photomultiplier tubes are actually um, see it's a whole series of pulses let me put this on um, uh, We'll put it on a set of dots, vectors, so you can see the the vectors there. And let's zoom in. How interesting. It's like an impulse. So what I'm concerned about is that the photomultiplier tubes can pick up electronic noise. So I might try to shield this tube a little bit. But here's what one of the impulses looks like and um, I need to uh, do some investigation to see whether this is electronic noise it's picking up or whether it's actually a neutron signal but we are definitely detecting something and it's a whole bunch of series of spikes pulse modulated just as we were doing the tube and uh, there we go. We'll take a look at the tube over here. So it's flashing away. Yeah, I can turn out the lights a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, there's our scope and. Here's our tube flashing away, and uh, so I guess uh, here's our preliminary results. So that it is a big maybe because there could be electronic noise getting into our tube, but um, we're going to try to shield the tube a little bit better and uh, to get the electronic noise out if there is any in there, and we'll look at the signal again and uh, do uh, part four of the video and uh, see if uh, we believe that we're getting neutrons or not because scope is seeing something scope is definitely seeing something and so this is the way science works it's slow <coughs> that's why there's no money in it right but it's very interesting okay just wanted to verify that our neutron detector is working also 
So this is, um, I don't have our, our noise source on, so we're going to have to troubleshoot that a little bit later to make sure that we can get rid of the noise. So this is, uh, this is our signal with the uh, high voltage off, and I, I, this is probably supposed to really run at 1,000 volts, but this is what I could find right now is a power supply that goes up to 600, so let's uh, turn her on. And now you see when we turn it on, we're getting these uh, impulses. This is from the triggering on those from uh, cosmic rays, probably. And that is what our signal should look like for getting neutrons. And uh, of course, when we turn the power supply off, that signal goes away. So our neutron detector is working. It, it is able to pick up co cosmic rays. Will when they hit the uh, pro, uh, scintillator will produce a similar effect to neutrons, fast neutron. But this has got to be fast neutrons also. And so see with the uh, power supply off, uh, we're getting no no counts here. And so um, let's let's just turn it back on for one more second. Okay, and then the counts would be significantly above the uh, level of noise if let's let's do this measure vector require. Let's not do peak detection. Let's do normal. Now maybe we need to do peak detection because it is a fast peak that we're looking for. So anyway, <coughs> that is what our signal should look like. And if we turn off the high voltage power supply, it does go away. So those are due to cosmic rays, but we'd like to see if our device can produce any of those, but I think it's producing a lot of noise right now, so we're going to have to um, try to reduce the no uh, electrical noise into the uh, detector and scope. And so that will be our next video. So anyway, this is uh, Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching.